<laughs> right, so number one question. How should you rejoin a motorway after a breakdown on the hard shoulder? Is it the second one? So what's that? Wait until the vehicle on the left hand lane signals that it's safe to rejoin. Mm. Okay, so how fast are the cars coming down the motorway? 70 miles. Potentially, aren't they? Oh, yeah. 70 miles an hour, right? Yeah, so you got to remember what he's saying to you, right? Um, you're in the hard shoulder. So what's yeah. the hard shoulder? That's where you put the side of the motorway where you pull off. Yeah, so if there's an emergency, you go into that. Yeah. Way, yeah? So does it run along with no. the motorway? Yeah, it does. Does it? Yeah, think of the hard shoulder. Think when you've been in your car. Yeah. Or out with your mum or anything, right? Yeah? You're driving down the motorway. If there is a hard shoulder, yeah. because it's not a smart motorway, then it runs next to it. It's like a, like a lane yeah. that people don't go in. Yeah. Right, yeah? So now think about when you're joining a dual carriageway or a motorway mm -hmm. and you come down the slip road, what do you do? Do you increase your speed or do you decrease it or do you stop and wait to come on? Increase. Cool, you can increase, don't you? Because yeah. you, what you're trying to do is match the speed mm. of the dual carriageway. Yeah. So read it again. So right, you've broken down on the hard shoulder, you've mended your car apparently, right, yeah? Yeah. So do you move straight out into the left lane, lane as you are not allowed to drive on the hard shoulder so what would that do? Imagine you're, we're driving down the left-hand lane, mm. suddenly someone just pulls out. What's that going to do to us? It's not good, is it? No. Right? So that's potentially no. Yeah. Right? Wait until the vehicles in the left-hand lane signals that you it's safe for you to rejoin. Is that ever going to happen? No. Probably not. Right? Build up your speed on the hard shoulder before looking for a safe gap to join the traffic. Potential? Yeah. Okay? Or... Keep your hazard lights flashing until you've safely rejoined the carriageway. So that's a potential, isn't it? Yeah. Or is it? What's more likely? We can kind speed. of knock these two out. The third one. Yeah. Do you see? Yeah. So let's have a look. Speed. I don't know. Maybe yes, maybe no. Yeah. We'll see at the end. A single carriageway road has this sign. What is the maximum speed for the car towing a trailer? 60. Okay. So what is the speed limit on a single carriageway road if we're in this car is that like a motorway no so motorways have more than one lane yeah okay so this is a single carriageway this is like i don't know your normal road yeah like one way that way one way the other way right yeah here. okay but you see that sign so the speed is what if you're just in your car on your own 50 50 you reckon and what? then if you tow in a trailer You've told me 60. Mm. So if you turn a trailer, it's faster. I don't know. Yeah, that yeah. Does that make sense? No. So go on then. Any... So is it 50? Is it 30? Is it 40? Or is it 60? It doesn't matter. Just just go with... Because what we're trying to do is go why, why you fail your theory. Yeah. So what, what are you going to go for? See, I've been going for 60. You're going to go for 60? That's what I've been going for. Yeah, there you go then. So we'll That's put six, we'll put 60 down. It's all right, yeah? Right? Um, yeah. So it says here that it's an incorrect answer. Mm. So shall we go back? So you've put 60, right, yeah? So uh, let me help you here. 60 is the correct answer if you're not towing a trailer. So is towing a trailer more potentially dangerous or less dangerous? More more so that means it's going to be potentially lower yeah so if you was making the rules up right yeah and you've got it at 60 as that road what would you say for a trailer 30. okay so that's a good answer but think about it right yeah yeah everyone on that road is traveling at 60 and then some mr johnson comes along with his caravan yeah is he going to do 30. no because everyone will be going what the so yeah. think of another speed what do you reckon would be a good speed 40. Potentially? 50. It's 50, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> what did you say? Yeah. Right? Yeah. Right. When may you stop on a motorway? See, this one's come up and it's always confused me because when you're tired and need a rest or if you're in an emergency or breakdown. Okay. Probably. Okay, let's start knocking off the ones yeah. that are potentially not the right answer. Mm. If your mobile phone rings. It's not going to be that, is it? No. Right, so we know that's not right, no. yeah? All right, so 
when you have when you're tired and need a rest that's a potential isn't it yeah yeah mm. in an emergency or a breakdown that's yeah. a potential and then if you have to read a mo, mo probably not yeah no. so now you're left with two yeah right yeah so if you're tired and need a rest all right yeah on a motorway you could either come off an exit let's say there's 10 miles between them or a service station yeah so i say in the mood it's your breakdown i see yeah. correct do yeah. you see yeah well, it is sometimes it's breaking it down mm. if you just jump for the question it's easy to it's, fail yeah. what is particularly important to check your vehicle before making a long journey so you're going on a long journey what do you need to check um So, why is it particularly important to check your vehicle? So, make sure that it's roadworthy. You should do that all the time, shouldn't yeah. you? You know, at least weekly, depending on the miles you do. But if you're going on a long journey, you want to make sure what? So, the road surface will wear down the tyres faster. I don't know. Does that make sense? But we'll, we'll put that to the side. Mm. Continuous high speeds increase the risk of your vehicle breaking down. Potentially, I suppose. So, yeah. we'll put that on the other side. I'll have to do more harsh braking on motorways. I'll put that yeah. away. Motorway service areas don't deal with breakdowns. I think I've seen breakdown bands there. Have you? I think, I think you, if you, if you, I don't know, if your car was a bit poorly, you probably could drive off there and get picked up. Mm. So the one is continual high speeds will increase the risk of the car breaking down. Potentially, you might use more fuel. Potentially, it could overheat. So yeah. Which one? Should we go for that one? Yeah. There you go. Done. Yeah. All right? Your car needs to pass an MOT test, right? Yeah? What may be invalidated if you drive your car without a current MOT certificate? The three vehicle registration document. Okay. So what's the vehicle registration docu document? What is it? Is that what you keep in your car? Don't need to keep it in the car, but it's you something do. to do, yeah? But yeah. it's basically, it tells you the car belongs to you or who the owner is. It might not be your car if you're driving a work car, right, yeah? Mm -hmm. What the car is, all the details of the car, right, yeah? Probably not going to be invalidated if you don't have an MOT. Right. Okay? So, we'll take that one out. Vehicle tax? What, what's vehicle tax? Okay, so you get what they call vehicle excise duty, and it's different rates for... Um, different cars for like this car for example mm -hmm. at the moment it's zero rate because it's electric right. if you're driving some big jeep it might be 400 pounds a year right okay so once you've paid that then that's done that's not going to be validated by not having um, an mot right. you might not be able to get road tax if you haven't got an mot but once it's in you've paid it okay so the vehicle service record What's that? It's so when you go to the garage and take your cert card to be serviced, then it's been done, isn't it? Yeah. Mm. You don't even need to get a car service. I mean, it's advisable, but you don't have to. Wow. No. So, the vehicles insurance. Insurance. What do you reckon? It's vehicles yeah. insurance, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Because you know what's going to happen. You have an accident. There's even a small accident, and they go, "Oh, is it? You know, they look. Oh, the MOT's out of date. Your brakes might not have been working, mate." Mm. Yeah this one you're in a built up area at night and the road is well lit why should you use dip, dipped headlights this is the one I fail on as well go on then um, yeah. so give me your answer and why I said which one did I say no I think I said the second one so so that your car can be easily seen by mm. others um, so we've got this here, so you can see further along the road, so that you can switch the main beam quickly, so that you can go at much faster speed, okay? You're right. Mm. I thought I failed in that one. No, so, so you can be easily seen by others, isn't it? Uh -huh. um, why is it important to make full use of the slip road as you rejoin a motorway? This is similar to the first question. So, so, is it the third? Of course it is. Yeah. 
Because you're picking your speed up, aren't you? Yeah. And then you are being able to match the gap. You have to go into the gap. Mm. I think. There you go. When are you allowed to park in a parking bay for disabled drivers? When you have a blue badge. Seems good. Mm. When should you use the left-hand lane of a motorway? This one confuses me now. Okay. So, is it when the road ahead is clear? Okay, so what have we got here? So, when you're making a phone call, okay. When your vehicle breaks down, when the road ahead is clear, when you're overtaking a slow moving vehicle. So, let's have a look at that one. Of course it is. It's your normal driving position. Yeah. What does third party insurance cover mean? Um, all oh, damage and injury. Oh. Okay, so let me give you a couple of scenarios and then you can apply it, right? Yeah? Mm -hmm. If I go and get my car insured, third party only, mm -hmm. that means if I drive into a car and then it goes into a wall, yeah. so there's a lot of damage, the person owning the wall is going to get paid, the person owning the car is going to get paid, I'm going to get nothing. Right. Okay? If I've got third party phone and theft, that will still apply, but if my car sets on fire or it's nicked, then potentially I'm gonna get paid out, right, yeah? yeah? If I've got comprehensive insurance, if we go back to my scenario with a car on the wall, everyone gets paid out, mm -hmm. okay? So, it's okay. So, have a look. What does third party cover mean? All damage and injury, damage to your vehicle, Injury to yourself, damage to other vehicles. Damage to other Others. Yeah. Okay. Dumb. Yeah. Do you see? Mm -hmm. That's third party. Third party is everybody else. Yeah. Not me. Okay. <laughs> right, yeah? Yeah. Okay? Here we go, right, yeah? So you're gonna do this. We're gonna do a quick mock test and you are gonna see if this works we can pass it, right, yeah? Okay. So, what would suggest you're driving on an icy road, right? Go with what you would think in a normal test. What should you suggest when you're driving on an icy road? Yeah. Um, there's, there's less tyre noise. Okay, so there's less tyre noise. Okay, carry on, quick as you can. What type of vehicle could you expect to meet in the middle of a road? Okay. Right. How should you rejoin a motorway after you break down on a hard shoulder? Build up the speed on the hard shoulder. Okay. One, two, or three. three. Yeah. There you go. Right. Yeah. What are you allowed? Um, when are you allowed to park in a parking bay for disabled drivers? When you have a blue badge. When you have a blue badge. See. Um, some two-way roads are divided into three lanes. Why are they particularly dangerous? First. Okay. Right. What does this sign mean? Okay. You're following the cyclist, what should you do when you wish to turn left a short distance ahead? So, first. Okay. Why does this junction have a stop sign and stop line on the road? First. Okay, what should you do if you park on the road when it's foggy? Third. Um, okay, what does this sign with a brown background show? Second. Okay, here we go. What's the speed limit usually be when you can see the street lights but no speed limit signs? 30. Okay, you're travelling alongside a residential street. There are parked vehicles on the left-hand side. Um, why should you keep your speed down? First. Okay. When will you feel the effects of engine braking? Um, both. Oh, God, I didn't even do that. Right. 
on a vehicle, where would you find the catalytic converter? Second. Okay. What is the main benefit of driving a four-wheel drive vehicle? Oh, um, first. Okay. How will your journey be affected by travelling outside busy times? Okay, what should you do if you overtake a cyclist when it's very windy? Allow extra room. Come on, cracking through these, am I? <laughs> what does this sign mean? My bridge. Okay, what should you be prepared to do in this situation? Slow down and give way. Okay, why do MOT include an exhaust emission test? Second. Okay, what does this sign mean? Crossroads. Why would it be where would it be unsafe to overtake? On a wrong no, um approaching a junction. You're driving in busy traffic, you want to pull up just after the junction on the left. What when should you signal? Before you reach the junction. Okay, what um, what do these zigzag lines mean? No parking at any time. Um, uh, you're approaching traffic light and the red light is showing. What signal will show next? Amber. Amber, Amber alone, yeah? Yeah. Okay, what should you do if your vehicle has a puncture on a motorway? Third. Okay, what does this motorway sign okay, mean? On this one. Um, third. Okay, why should you reduce your speed here? Can you see the picture? Yeah. A bit closer. There you go. Yeah. Um, I'm going to say fourth. Okay, in winter, road signs can become covered by snow. What does this mean? Stop. Okay, what colour the reflexes stubs between the hard shoulder and the left-hand lane of a motorway? White. Okay, you're approaching a crossroads. What should you do if traffic lights have failed? First. Okay, what the main cause of skidding? Weather. You're about to overtake a cyclist on a road that has a 30 mile speed limit. How much room should you leave as you overtake? Um, second. It did. What do most cyclists use dipped headlights in the daylight? So why do most cyclists use <laughs> Um, oh, first. Okay, which vehicles are prohibited from using the motorway? What does prohibited? Not allowed. Not allowed. Um, first. Double decker buses, eh? Yeah. Right, the fluid level in your battery is low. What, what fluid should you use to top it up? First. What does this sign mean? Fourth. Okay. What is the national speed limit for cars and motorcycles on a motorway? 70. Okay. How can you reduce the chance of a car being broken into when leaving it unattended? Uh, four. Um, yeah, sorry. Sorry first, yeah? Sorry. Okay. <laughs> right. What does this sign mean? Second. Okay, you're driving on icy road. What's the distance from the car in front should you drive? Six times the normal distance. Six times the normal distance, eh? Right, you're invited to a pub lunch. What should you do if you know if you known that you'll have to drive in the evening? Don't drink any alcohol at all. 
Um, you're approaching a roundabout. What should you do if the there's horses being ridden in front of you? Give them plenty of room. Okay. Uh, when must you use dipped headlights during the day? Uh, first. At an incident, it's important to look after any casualties. What should you do with them when the area is safe? Uh, keep them where they are. I would say move them, but then. So we've got... What would you say? What would you go if you was on your test? Probably keep them where they are. Okay, how will a roof rack affect your car? Um, first. Okay, what shapes are traffic signs giving orders? First. That one. Oh, that one, that one, that one. Um, one, two, three, four. That one. Okay. Right, here we go, right, yeah? Um, so what do the lines along the centre of the road mean? So a little video for you. So what do the lines centre of the road mean? Note taking. Okay, so you see enough? Yeah. Do, do, do. Take that, All right, so you've got to go for these answers. Mm -hmm. They mark the centre of the road, no overtaking, there's a hazard ahead, no stopping. I don't know if it's a hazard ahead. No, no overtaking. No overtaking, yeah. Okay, this one. So you want to overtake the tractor, what should you do? So again, here we go, same video. You want to overtake the tractor, what should you do? Okay, is that enough? Yeah. Right, okay, so the ones are stay behind stay behind them, wait until you have a clear view, sound your horn and make the tractor pull over, overtake straight after the oncoming um, car passes, speed up and overtake before you get to the bend. First. Okay, here we go. This one, we've seen the video loads of times. <laughs> so we don't see it again, I think. Right, um, so why has the tractor got a flashing amber light? Um, it's because it's got a flashing amber light. Okay, so what do we get? 34. So it's okay, so the 34 is where you told me that you normally come in yeah. around about, 30, was it 32 to 34? Yeah. So, so we have a quick look of why this yeah. is happening, right? Yeah. So if you have a look, a lot of them, I was looking thinking, yeah, this is all right, right? But then some of them, it was, I was wondering whether you were guessing. Yeah. Do you see what I mean? Rather than, um, but let's go for this one, right? Yeah. What type of vehicle could you expect to meet in the middle of the road, right? Yeah. So you put car. It's going to go me as well. Yeah. Because in the middle of the road, I know it's it, 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 what it is. The height's small, isn't it? Yeah. Mm. So if a lorry, which is higher, is going to go through there, yeah. they're not going to go to the side, are they? No. Where a car would. So it's going to be a lorry, isn't it? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Uh, so we're lucky. So we got that run right. Okay, got that. Good, 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 good. This one, right? So what should you do if you're parked on the road when it's foggy? So it's this one, leave the parking lights switched on, right? Yeah. Now, <laughs> I can see why you've gone for dip headlights and fog lights switched on, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. What do you reckon would be not so good about leaving them on? Forget about how it might confuse people. What might not be so good? Let's say you. It's, yeah. Let's say you go to your mate's house and you're watching a film. Yeah. <laughs> come out. Yeah. Your car's not going to work, is yeah. it? Right? So this one, you've obviously seen that Alton Towers around here. Yeah. Good, positive, 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 positive. Whoa. So how will your journey be affected by travelling outside those terms? Well, you've gone and put, your journey will take longer. Mm. But the question is, outside busy times. Yeah. Fewer delays. Yeah. Probably. That's common sense. Right? But you see that? I was watching yeah. you and you're kind of rushing. Yeah. Because you've gone for, oh, longer. Yeah. Down that negative road. They're yeah. not all negative answers. No. Right? So here we go. This one, right? Yeah? <laughs> if you think about this one, right? You put low bridge. Mm. Well, it is potentially a low bridge. Yeah. But when you've got to look at it, it's what's coming up. 
Yeah. So Humbert Bridge. God, yeah. Did you say? Mm. <laughs> uh, good. This one. Why the MIT tests include exhaust emission, right? Yeah. So you put. I was going for that last mm, one. Yeah. Of course it is because that's the way they change things, isn't it? If you make the rules a bit stricter, yeah. otherwise people being people. If, I could, if they could get a cheap old car that's kicking out loads of smoke, yeah, I don't care, it's cheap. Yeah. And they're, they're, they're suffocating kids. That's why they're doing that um, in London, you know, the low emission yeah. areas. People moan all the time. But you need rules to make them realise this is the right thing to do. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. This one, good, crossroads. Mm -hmm. you, you looked like you was going to get a bit confused and you went, oh, cross, yeah. cross, cross, it's a cross. Yeah. <laughs> right, good. Um... So yeah, um, this one. Driving in busy traffic, you want to pull up just after the junction on the left. When should you signal? Well, you went just before you reach the junction. Well, if I do that, or you do that, that's going to make people think you're turning in the yeah. junction. Do you see? Mm. So as you as you are passing or just after the junction. Makes yeah. sense? Yeah. It's just that reading, isn't it? Just, it's, it's, yeah. Right? Um... You're approaching traffic lights and the red light is showing. What one will show next? So many people get this wrong. Right, yeah? Yeah. Okay. Oh God. It's red and amber. Think. Red light showing. Yeah. Red and, red and amber. Am, red and amber and off, then green. Mm. And then back, it's the amber. If you see amber. It's amber alone when you're stopping, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. <laughs> okay. What should you do if your vehicle has a puncture? So you got that right. Mm -hmm. This one you said you got confused. Yeah. Yeah. So you put no services for 50 miles. That's nothing to do with distance. These are not no. boards. This is temporary maximum speed limit. Temporary maximum. Yeah. Okay. But not like how far to places are. Yeah. That will be on the um, direction boards. Uh, yeah. Uh, this one. Um, why should you reduce your speed here? I, I, I can see what you're saying, right, yeah? The surface um, changes ahead. I thought because of the van. Mm. But then when you look at it, it does, yeah. But the surface is my, it's like the, the, the texture of the road or yeah. the tarmac. It's a staggered junction. Yeah. <laughs> so look at what the... You can see the sign, can't mm. you, how it shows? Yeah. It's, yeah. <laughs> right, so, oh. right, so this one, yeah, all good. Mm -hmm. This one, um, where are we? What colour? Do you struggle with these? Yeah. Okay, this, let's try and make it easy for you, right? Yeah. I'm on the hard shoulder, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So the hard shoulder we know is for emergencies, right? Yeah. So if I'm broken down on the hard shoulder, I don't want people swapping into that lane, do I? No. Right? So what colour do you reckon, out of all the colours they use on the road, would be a good colour to tell other vehicles not to cross it? Red. There you go. So that's red, right, yeah? yeah? Now, I'm coming down a slit road, and if that line, red line, continued, that would be bad, wouldn't it? Because I wouldn't yeah. be able to cross it. So what colour do you reckon it goes between the slit roads? What's a good colour for me to get on? Green. There you go, right? <laughs> so we've got our red and green, right, So it's yeah? never amber or white. Right? Yeah. Now, the white ones are what you get in the middle of the road. Yeah. On, you know, like if you're driving that's special, seen, up to me, yeah. yeah. So you can you can cross them, can't you? Yeah. As long as it's safe to do so. So that's in between the lanes, right, yeah? yeah? Now, they've got one, if you look at the highway code, what does amber mean, right, yeah? Um, If you was approaching, what does it mean? Slow down. No. Nah. Actually means stop, unless it's unsafe to do so. Right. So if you see amber, it means stop, right, yeah? Okay. So it's pretty same, similar to the red. So the red, you don't want to go over into the hard shoulder. Mm -hmm. So on the other side, because they haven't got another colour, they don't want to put red. Yeah. Because that would be confusing in fog. If you saw red there and red there, you wouldn't know where you was. Yeah. So they do it as an amber. Again, you don't want to cross the amber. No. Yeah. Right? So what colours are we ready to start between the hard shoulder and the left-hand lane? Red. Red. Did you see? Yeah. Okay. And then, good. Uh skidding right yeah when i first did this job and um trained to become a driving instructor right yeah, yeah. well you had to it's done all on computer now but you had to write down not write down but you had to do this like test and you had to put it in right yeah and this is the one that got me wrong so well, i think it made me foul the first one right yeah so if you think about it everyone wants to go for the weather the vehicle there's something wrong with the vehicle mm. or the road 
but in the end it's always the driver so for example it's snowing do I want to go this fast? Do I want to go out? No. That's my responsibility to make that decision. The road, I know this road got loads of potholes or it's very slippery. So should yeah. I reduce my speed? The driver, the vehicle, brakes are awful. I'm not going to drive that car until I get no. repaired. So all of them are factors, but it's always the, the driver. driver. Yeah, that <laughs> makes sense. Yes. Yeah. And when you, you and, and I know exactly you? where you're coming from on that because I did that. Did you? Yeah, I did that. I saw it as well. Some question I put, yeah, it's a vehicle. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right? This one, right? You're about to overtake a cyclist on the road that has 30 mile hour speed limit. How much room should you give it, right? Yeah? So, that one, right? Yeah. Right. In the highway code, they've updated the rules at least 1.5 meters, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. But, um, yeah, as much as you would go a car. This one, all right, good. This one. Um, actually, on that one, was that a guess? I think it was. Okay. Basically, your, your dipped headlights are going to make things seem more easy, yeah? Motorcycles are skinny, they're small, aren't they? Yeah. So if you've got a light, even you in the day, you're going to yeah, see. Yeah, you can see, yeah. Um, here we go. Which vehicles are prohibited from using the motorway, yeah? So not allowed to use the motorway, right, yeah? Have you ever seen a double-decker bus? Well, when I was a kid, there was a bus station. My mum and dad used to take me on day trips down to South End on a double-decker bus. You paid about a tenner. Of course they can go motorways. It's not restricted. Oh, my God. Right, now yeah? you see my power mobility skid. Okay. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So take your time, yeah. right? There is a thing that says motorcycles under... 50 cc the side yeah. of the engine aren't allowed on but look at it over yeah okay cars with automatic transmission well oh, i'm on about way all the time <laughs> right can you yeah. see you need just to take your time and just think logically yeah you can get big lorries on on the motorway you can get double decker bars uh, that, yeah <laughs> right that makes sense <laughs> right this one you seem to know yeah, yeah okay this one you seem to know yeah so all good here yeah so this one you know, this one, you seem to know. Yeah. Right, this one, yep, yeah. jumped in, you knew that. This one, driving on icy road, what's the distance from cars you should drive, right, yeah? So, gonna give you a little thing, you might have heard, if you're driving behind a car, drive weather, it's two second rule. Wet weather, rainy weather, four second rule. Mm -hmm. In snow and ice, stopping distance can be up to, you've put six times. Where did that come from? Okay, it's 10. ten. It can be up to ten times. Because right. if you just go on the brakes, you're potentially Still not going to stop. You're going to keep going, right? Yeah. Uh, good. Yeah. Um, yeah. Horses, you know what they're going to do. Horses, yeah. You're always going to give them more room. Um, yep. Um, yep. Yep. <laughs> okay. So. Round signs, okay, are orders. Right, okay. okay. But there's two kinds of orders, right, yeah? There is a negative order. So if it's red and um, you've got, for example, 30 on it, do not go faster than 30. That's an order. Okay. Right? But if it's blue around it, it becomes a positive order. So you must go faster than 30. Right, okay. So negative and positive. They're both orders, but they're negative and positive. Right, yeah? So that one's negative, blue is positive. Yeah. Okay. okay. This square sign is normally directions, you know, city centre. Yeah. Right, yeah. This one could be um, anything, couldn't it? Like, oh, there's um, so the, the railway that was station. Brown, wasn't it? That yeah. Was it could be a brown one, couldn't it? Yeah. yeah. Right? So these are the orders, but the triangle ones, it's, hazard, isn't it? it's warnings, Yeah. anything warning, right, yeah? So I could put anything in there, horses, planes, warnings, right, yeah? yeah? The only one that's different, but it's still a warning, is the give way one, it's upside down because of the snow, if it snows, you'd know that it was a, a give way, but it's still a warning, yeah. but all there's them, right, okay. yeah? Where are we now? So, you told me that the centre line was no overtaking mm. but what is no overtaking it's not broken is it no so what is it 
Was it just where it continuously... Solid line. Yeah. Right, so no overtaking. Which you was going to... You doubted yourself, didn't you? Yeah. Right, yeah? Now, you, you can see why it is a hazard ahead. So you get different lines on the road, right, yeah? You get ones that are short and they've got... Um, like just gaps in between them, mm. and they're normally road marking ones, right? Yeah, you'll see them driving up to Mere Heath, right? Yeah? yeah, and then when you get to what they call fixed hazards, so a fixed hazard could be a junction, a bend, right? They know that they're, they're hazards, but they don't know what's going to happen. They could be completely empty the road, yeah. but it's potentially where there's a hazard. They go long with short gaps, so they're hazard warning lines. Yeah, that's what it is. Um, yeah, this one, amazing. Amazing, good. So, that's that. You just need 